Hello and welcome to another episode of Snack Break by OrthoSnacks. I'm your host, John Schaefer, and on this podcast, I interview physical therapists, fitness professionals, and health and wellness experts. My guest today received his undergraduate degree from the University of Delaware in 2018 and his DPT from NYU in 2021. He now works in in an out-of-network outpatient ortho group in Manhattan, as well as treats employees of corporate clients that have house medical centers, in-house medical centers. He is Dr. Andre Benzar. Andre, thanks for coming on. What's up, John? How are you? Happy to talk shop with you tonight. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, we talked a little bit about this before we went on air. Um, but I have talked a little bit to PTs who had like corporate, corporate wellness shops and things like that. Um, but I haven't really had the chance to talk to anyone who works like specifically in the corporate setting. So I think this yeah. would be a great opportunity for me to learn a little bit more about that, um, as well as some of the listeners as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's important, like before we move any further into the conversation, just we have like a working definition. Um, What is corporate PT in your own words? Yeah, so in me, uh, when I when I think of corporate PT, uh, obviously you mentioned like on the different wellness programs and stuff, but like in my mind and like the definition like where I work in is actually treating in like an in-house medical center. So, I mean, I'm sure as our listeners probably know, like a lot of these huge companies, they actually provide medical services on site. So that's essentially what I'm kind of part of. And that's what my definition of corporate PT is. It's not something that's common, obviously. Uh, It's something that I was pretty unaware of going throughout school. Mm -hmm. Um, It kind of got brought to my attention. We had one lecture on ergonomics and there was kind of a angle that that lecture took towards like kind of you know treating like you said like wellness programs and stuff like that in the corporate setting um and you know I I think I heard of one person I knew that was like hired actually like by the company itself to provide services on on site but you know it's it's really difficult to get an idea of what that looks like as a student because you know it's very difficult to get like a clinical affiliation in that setting just because of like the the kind of high high class clientele of that nature and stuff like that um, so I really had no idea what it entailed until I ended up in this position. But yeah, so in my mind, when I think of corporate PT, I'm thinking of on-site treatment. Um, you know, you're actually going to that company's office and, you know, performing uh, treatment there. Okay. Very interesting. I would definitely say I fall in the same category. I think we had like one ergonomics lecture, but outside of that, nothing super, super specific. Right. I mean, exactly. Like it's a couple of lectures you have in PT school. Um, there's a couple questions on the boards, you know, that mm-hmm. is just like the basics of what you got to know. But then other than that, um, you know, it's not really touched on and, you know, I'm, I'm leading with ergonomics, but as we'll get into, I mean, it's much more than that. Um, mm-hmm. but we'll kind of save that for later, I think. Okay. Sounds good. So maybe you can kind of jump right in then to how you got involved with corporate PT. I mean, yeah. after you after you first heard about it, what what were the next steps you took, and then how eventually did you find a job? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, so it's pretty funny. Uh, I mean, this was like sheer luck. I'll be honest. So I came out of school gung ho on acute care. I was like, I'm really? gonna be in acute. Yeah, it was really really crazy. And like, it was funny because I don't know. I mean, like. Not that I'm the most athletic person, but I, I think people just looked at me throughout school and they're like, oh, this guy's going to go into outpatient ortho. Mm-hmm. Uh, I enjoy working out, stuff like that. I don't know. My professors had that view of me. I just had that look. Uh, I just feel like also like just being a kind of a people person. It just, you kind of drive in that atmosphere. But no, I was, it came out gung-ho. I had great acute care affiliations in school. And I was like, I'm going to, for sure, I have no interest in ortho, right? I'm going to come out of school, apply for acute care jobs. And that's going to be it. I was like, I'm going to get a job in a hospital. That's where my career is going to start. And I started applying, um, you know, it was on the tail end of COVID, but it was also kind of in that point where like things were very up in the air. So I started applying to a ton of acute care jobs. I mean, it was like, it was months, honestly, where I was like, not really, I had like maybe one, uh, one interview basically uh, didn't hear back. Uh, I was applying to like every hospital in New York and it was, t- it was kind of demoralizing for a little bit because it was like places also that I had aff- affiliations at that were just like, you know, and I mean, I know that there was a lot of competition for acute care because there was a hiring freeze for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I was applying for a while and, you know, I'll be honest. So like the idea of like treating in a corporate setting, like I said, in school was always kind of like in the back of my mind. I'm like, that sounds really cool. Like it was always something that I had just in the back of my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, I kind of transitioned. I was like, all right, acute care is not working out. It's been like two months now. 
I, 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 I was, and I'm still doing home care per diem. So I was still doing that at the time. I knew I had no interest in doing that full time. So, I mean, it's really anticlimactic, but I literally just went on Indeed and I started looking for all these different openings. I swear to God, it was, it was this, this like boring. And I'm scrolling through different jobs. I knew I was not interested in the whole in-network mill kind of vibe. I had an appeal at kind of like one of those mills, so to say. Sure. Um, did not like it. Just I knew that was something that was very unappealing to me. So uh, I was kind of focusing my search to more of the like out of network, like one-on-one -on -one treatment types of places. And I came across this one listing and in the listing, uh, it specifically listed, you know, this opportunity to treat on site at one of their uh, corporate clients, basically. Um, so that automatically caught my eye. Uh, I applied to the position um, pretty quickly. I heard back. <laughs> That's how I take your time. Uh, pretty quickly. I heard back. Uh, I did like a zoom interview and then, you know, at first I got kind of hired to be uh, part-time at the corporate clinic, basically. So I was going to be basically there a couple of days a week. And then at one of our own like outpatient ortho clinics, another day, uh, two, the two other days of the week. Um, but so I, you know, interviewed, we jived really well. Uh, everything went well. And then I started and then uh, basically I was going, like I said, three days a week. And then, you know, I was just doing so well there. And I don't know, it was just like personality types or what it was, but um, it was just going really well. We were getting really busy there too. So now I've actually transitioned to being there full time. Um, so yeah, now my day, my weeks are solely at this corporate clinic. Um, but yeah, honestly, it's a pretty boring kind of story, but I will say, uh, the way that like my company got involved in it is heavily based on networking. Mm -hmm. So essentially what it came down to was, uh, my boss has been seeing, uh, one of his patients for years now, like close to 15 years and that pa uh, that patient is essentially high up in the structure at a major company and at one point reached out to him personally and was like hey like you know we're opening this health clinic in our company like on site mm -hmm. we're looking for a PT to provide services is that something you would want to do and I mean like my boss is like the owner of this company is two different clinics he's not just gonna you know like close up shop and do that mm -hmm. and him being the genius that he is he goes well you know I think it'd be a better idea instead of just, you know, hiring me, you kind of just contract our company. So you have access to a group of providers rather than one single provider, which I thought was kind of a genius idea for, for two different reasons is a, you have, you kind of access now as a company to, you know, a bunch of different mindsets, a bunch of different treatment types, a bunch of different specialties of different people, because, so I'm not the only one that goes there. We do have like three other of my colleagues that's uh, that like, are you going part-time? I'm the only one that goes full-time, but on certain days, there's two of us there. Um, so on that regard, and then also, you know, as a big company, you don't really know what to look for in a clinician, you know, like a humongous company, corporate company that has nothing to do with healthcare. Mm -hmm. They don't know what a good PT may look like. You know, they don't know what to look for in the interview process, all these different things. And just like the idea of like staffing and scheduling, taking that off of the plate of that giant company to deal with, um, is appealing to them. So, you know, I've heard of these situations where people get hired in-house by the company themselves, but to me, I think the more genius idea is kind of what we came up with as being contracted uh, by the company, like our entire company, so that we can just handle all their PT services. Yeah, okay, interesting. Yeah. So is it a situation where you feel like your company or a company in a similar position would be reaching out looking for more contracts? Or is this a situation where they kind of stumbled upon this great business opportunity, um, yeah. made the contract, and then they're just going to stick with this. Right. Yeah. I mean, like in prior to it, we definitely were kind of doing these like different, it wasn't as like high scale at like these large companies, but it was kind of these outreach programs of like providing services on site for like particular gyms or like, you know, like uh, different situations like that. It was never like a giant company like that, but we were already kind of involved in that kind of outreach program like, you know, why should we limit ourselves to treating patients just in our clinics mm -hmm. when we can provide our services elsewhere? Um, because, you know, that's appealing to different to different situations, like different gym owners. They'd love to have PTs come in, provide services on site. It's a win-win. You know, we get our name out there to the gym clientele. The gym also can, you know, advertise saying, hey, we have PT services on site, um, mm -hmm. you know, provided by this outpatient group. 
So we were already involved in that. And, and yeah, I mean, and then looking into the future, obviously, uh, I mean, like I said, a lot of this, a lot of this, I think is you're going to find success by word of mouth, by networking, mm -hmm. because realistically, you know, if you just, I mean, first of all, I, I should say it does help though, already doing it, you know, now that we are doing it, it's helpful. But going to a huge company and saying, hey, like, let us provide PT services for you on site at your health clinic. It's kind of like, well, you know, why should we change up what we have already? Like, what's the reason? Like, why, you know, we don't really know who you are, blah, blah, blah. Um, so networking and re like, you know, just word of mouth are huge in this regard. But, you know, on the horizon, I, I do think like our, our plans to kind of move forward a little bit in this regard to try and expand our uh, territory with different companies. Okay. So then when you talk about, you know, networking being so important, what would you say are maybe a few just key things that worked really well for you and your company as you sought out contracts, whether that be with gyms yeah. um, or just anyone you're looking for to kind of reach out to market your services to? Yeah. I mean, I really, this is like, again, like so simple, but like in this, in our industry, like people really overlook uh, just like simple people skills. Like, you know, everyone's very focused and there's nothing wrong with being focused on like, you know, getting as many certifications as you can taking as many, you know, courses as you can, blah, blah, blah. But the problem is, you know, you could, you could have as many letters as you want after your name, but like the sheer fact is if, if your patients don't enjoy spending, you know, 30 to 45 minutes with you one-on-one, -on -one, they're just, you're not, you know, they're not going to come back. So in my opinion, as far as like networking and like gaining people's trust to this degree it is really, it's a obviously providing, you know, exceptional PT, obviously, like that's without a doubt, you need to get results. You need to get your patients better. That's the bottom line. Um, and it's also just seriously, just it's being a people person. It's like mm -hmm. really just making sure that all of your patients actually like spending time with you. And, um, you know, it's more of an actual kind of, you know, I don't want to say friendship, but close to that. It's like, you know, they come to you, uh, you're helping them with whatever issues they're having function functionally, uh, strength wise, whatever it is, but also, you know, you're there for them on another level of just, you know, it could be emotionally, anything. It's, it's really just giving it your all every treatment session of being there for them. And I think it really just pays dividends. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll say like my boss is like, I feel like one of the most personal people I've met in this industry and it's paying off for him big time. So I, I really think that's such a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. And people overlook these soft skills and it's not something you, you're really taught, honestly. And, you know, there's really no way to teach it, um, but it's so important. <laughs> and, you know, especially in New York City, I'll be honest. Yeah. A lot of, I feel like it's just a lot of practice, a lot of reps, trying to make sure that every single encounter is a positive one. And then, yeah. And like, you know, don't drive yourself crazy over it, but it's yeah. like, I mean, I always say like, you know, go into it, like, don't you can't go into a, uh, any treatment session, any eval, like freaking out or like being nervous because it's going to show so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so even like if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you kind of always just have to keep your cool. You have to exude confidence, honestly, even in a situation where you might not be 100 percent on what you're doing. Yeah, and I feel like even more so, it's just important that you reflect on how an experience went, because I feel like you can get just as much out of that as well. So, you yeah, know what absolutely. You're on moving forward. Absolutely. And like, yeah, I'm like, in that regard, like, patient feedback is really important. I mean, like, you know, I like when I hear, you know, that a patient was like, Oh, you know, like, he was really good. But like, I had a really good session with him, blah, blah. It's like, you know, it's a little bit of an ego booster. But it's also like, mm -hmm. shows you it's like, you know, even if I didn't feel like I was doing everything right, I made a positive impact on that person. And it kind of just like you said, it's like getting your reps in, just treating people having those kind that kind of feedback of like, okay, like this person came out of this situation in a better in a better light than they came into it and then you know you're just going to gain confidence as you go that way and it's and i really think that's kind of what it comes down to in regards to networking and all of that yeah really just you know leaving a positive impact on your patient no matter how you do it mm -hmm. so i think the next thing i want to talk about you kind of touched on it a little bit already but just in terms of how these clinics are run so if part of it is in-house the other the other part of the clinic is not um, and you mentioned that you're shuffling physical therapists in and out. Like, what does your schedule week to yeah. week look like? Maybe right, yeah, it was now, a little confusing. So maybe I'll kind now of go versus um, before when you were part time. Right, I'll go. Yeah, so more into depth with that. Um, so the way this works in like my specific situation is this this giant company basically has a fitness center, 
Mm -hmm. um, within the fitness center, there's a health clinic, right? And in the health clinic, um, it's, it's me, a PT. There's a nurse practitioner. Uh, there's a registered nurse. And there's also a, a psychologist for mental health services. Um, so we all have our own offices. So I have my own treatment center, uh, treatment room, basically pretty much anything that you would need, um, in the room basically in itself, but then also, you know, we have access to this gym too. So mm -hmm. pretty much everything you need is there. Um, but like I said, each kind of discipline has their own office or own treatment room. Um, so that's the physical setup of it. As far as like, yeah, the shuffling in and out, it's like, so right now we're on a situation where like Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, uh, I'm there by myself. Mm -hmm. uh, on Tuesdays, basically it's me and one of my other colleagues. And on Thursdays, again, it's me and then another one of my colleagues. Um, so that's a setup we have. We have another therapist that also is there for like, for, like we talked about like scheduling and stuff like that. So this is kind of an important part of it too. You know, if one of us wants to take vacation on a certain day, you know, if you're just hired in-house, if you're like the only PT, let's say, that's hired in-house by a company, if you want to take vacation, there has to be a lapse in services, right? You know, they don't have another PT to provide services on that day. In this situation that we've carved out, if I want to go on vacation, we can have one of our therapist that you know isn't usually treating there come and cover for me right so there's no lapse in treatment it ensures continuity of care um so that's a big part of uh like also the selling point that i was talking about earlier as to why it kind of makes more sense to contract this kind of situation out to an already established clinic um but yeah so like i said i'm there now i'm there full time but at pr previously it was just one of us there a day so basically I would be there Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Another one of my colleagues was there Tuesday. Another was there on Thursday. And at that point in time on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I was treating at like my company's like uh, clinic at a different location, mm -hmm. just like a normal kind of out of outpatient, out of network clinic. Now, what do the hours look like for the in-house? Yeah, that's a good question. So, uh, and we've had, a, you know, actually a lot of discussions about this, you know, with amongst ourselves and then amongst also with like kind of the corporate client as well. Um, you know, when you think of like outpatient PT, my, my uh, experience was always like, it'd be busiest from like 7 AM to 9 AM. And then like, I'm sure, yeah, you guys see the same. And then like, you know, later in the evening, let's say like five, mm -hmm. seven 30, again, it's a madhouse, right? Um, it's a little bit the case that way, but actually it's interestingly enough, a lot of people in this situation, they kind of want to line up their breaks that they would normally take throughout the day with PT. So we actually kind of see an influx of uh, people wanting to come in at like 11 to like 4 PM, um, which obviously like isn't the norm. It's like a normal outpatient clinic, but you got to keep in mind, like this is literally just these people going from their office upstairs to downstairs, you know, mm -hmm. to the health clinic. Um, but so hour wise on, um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm there from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, now I'm there from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then my colleagues there from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we also stagger our breaks so that at any point in the day, you know, you could schedule an appointment. Mm -hmm. um, but so we found that that's kind of like the best situation in regards to that climate. Obviously, a little bit different than your traditional outpatient. Um, but like I said, it's like, you know, you got to consider this isn't like them leaving the office, you know, getting on the train, having to go, even if it's like, even if it's like a 10 minute walk, you know, like no one would ever be like, Oh, that's so far away. The difference is colossal, like really of like going 10 minutes, you know, down the road versus like literally just going downstairs. You know, you can leave all your stuff upstairs. There's locker rooms in the gym down there. It's just very easy. And I'll be honest, like I have patients that are like, they'll tell me they're like, I've been dealing with this, you know, for years, realistically, and I've never done anything about it because I'm so busy at work. And the thought of just even leaving the office is like a lot for me because it's going to put me behind work wise. So if this was never implemented in our office, I probably would have never addressed this. So mm -hmm. as far forgetting like a convenience aspect of like it being so close, it's, it's actually encouraging people to do something about their issues, which is, I think, such a wonderful thing. Yeah, I think that offers a good segue into our next section. So I'm curious, like what the typical client you're treating actually looks like. I mean, your website mentions several different injuries and conditions, pathologies that you guys specialize in. Right. Um, but I, I told you this a little bit before off air, but just 
my kind of perception of what you'd be treating primarily is, you know, a lot of desk workers with postural (laughs) issues. And from what you told me, your experience has been a little bit different, which is good. Yeah, no, I, I, like I told you before, I, I came in, I was seeing the same thing. I'm like, all right, you know, like whatever, it's gonna be a lot of like neck and back pain, obviously they're sitting for long periods of time, blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, like I told you, I remember the first patient I saw there, I come in and it was literally the most high level patient I've ever worked with as far as that, like an athlete goes. Um, like I mentioned before, my outpatient orthopedics uh, affiliation was just kind of, you know, and you see athletes at these PT mills and stuff like that, but it was, it, it was the most I saw was like, you know, a college athlete realistically. I'm not, you know, not that they're, not that they weren't that good, but like really it was like a D3 athlete and like their, the condition they came in for was pretty minor. Like it wasn't something that I was treating that was very high level where I had to get them back to this, this point of like, you know, high intensity competition. But so I came in the first day, one of the first people I see, um, is like a ultra marathon or triathlon athlete that has like all these different things going on. He has an, a triathlon coming up in like two months that he's like, we need to get me in shape for, for this, like this day, no matter what, like I need to do this uh, triathlon. And I was like, this is awesome. I was like, I did not expect actually having like athlete, really athletic, you know, uh, clients coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one of the first people I saw. Right. And then like in that same day, I also saw like a post-op ACL and in my head, I'm like, this is kind of nuts. Like, you know, but then, and then I thought about it and I'm like, I don't know why I'm surprised though. Cause I'm like, think about the convenience of, you know, you get surgery and then you're like, wow, this is going to be so annoying. Like I'm going to have to leave the office. Cause like, you know, with an ACL, you can't really, you know, beat around the bush with PT. Like you need to go, you need to rehab your knee if you want to get back to doing stuff. So, you know, they're thinking this is going to suck. I'm going to have to leave the office like three times a week to go do PT. Mm-hmm. But, and then in this situation, they're like, wait, I could just go downstairs and do PT. Right. So, you know, when I'm, I'm coming into it, I'm thinking the same thing you're thinking. I'm like, it's gonna be all these people that are just sitting at desks all day. They have neck issues, back issues. But then like, once I saw these two people come in on my like first day, literally, I'm like, you know, this makes so much sense. I was like the convenience factor of this is off the charts. Whereas wh- why would anyone go like, you know, an employee of this company, why would they go anywhere else to treat anything? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it also, it also though, it like, it does come with that, the fact that like we do, you know, we did kind of garner their trust too. It's like, you know, the first time they come down, they're like, you know, let's see what this is all about. You know, let's see. Cause it was also a new thing to these employees when this first started, they weren't sure the extensiveness of our, you know, what we're going to be offering and stuff like that, mm-hmm. how qualified we are, things like that. But, you know, once they come down and they have one treatment session with us, they're like, oh, this is, you know, this is the real deal. It's like a 45 minute one-on-one treatment session. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, that's something that you're not going to get at a lot of other places. And mind you, this is in your office and, you know, covered by your company. So, so when you think about it, it's like, of course, there's going to be everything that you would see in any PT clinic here, because why would an employee go anywhere else when they have this option? Mm -hmm. Um, With... With that being said, there definitely is also a lot of people that do come in with like classic ergonomic issues, um, you know, the general neck pain, general back pain, because I mean, the fact of the matter is, you know, sitting all day, it's going to take a toll. Um, But yeah, so like I said, you know, I came in with the same idea that you did, but I was kind of blown away with the fact that, you know, I saw even more kind of high level uh, patients than I did at my uh, ortho field during school. Sure. So then, I mean, what's the average treatment plan look like for these patients? Like how many times are you seeing them a week? Um, Would you say that also kind of lines up with the same trend as it being, you know, it lines up with typical outpatient? You know, I would, I would for certain, I would for certain conditions. Um, Mm. So like, for example, like, you know, actually it's almost even more effective in certain situations because like take like an ACL, for example, right. Or like a rotator cuff repair um realistically you know when you're relying on insurance or uh, you know you have to kind of leave the office to get to pt and stuff like that mm-hmm. you're not going to go every day right like there's just no way you're going to do that like you'll just go two to three times a week usually that's like what the prescription says um but in reality you know you could probably benefit from going every single day right um not to say that you're going to do as high intensity stuff as you would on every single day like obviously you kind of have to keep in mind like to slowly progress the patient but 
in this situation, they're able to come down essentially every day. So, you know, it actually kind of, it kind of almost improves the prognosis, I think, for certain conditions where more treatment garners a better outcome. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, like I said, it really varies. Like, so there, for certain situations, we might see someone every day of the week, realistically, they might come down every single day. Um, We'll do something maybe different every day. Um, But then there's also people that, you know, I'll see once a week. There's even some people that I'll see, you know, once every other week, realistically, where it's more of like kind of they're progressing back into like something Mm -hmm. that's like, you know, high intensity interval classes or like CrossFit kind of stuff where I don't really need to put my hands on them. I don't need to see them in person necessarily every week. Um, But the biweekly check-ins offer, you know, really good opportunity to kind of assess symptoms, assess, assess where they are in their progression, um, you know, progress their HEP, stuff like that. Um, so this, again, another beautiful part of this situation is it offers so much flexibility. Like there's no, you know, you have to follow this like two to three times a week for six weeks or something like that. It's really up to you what you want to do, what you think is going to be best. And I mean, this is kind of off topic from what you said, but like, it really is awesome too, because I feel like it offers me so much more autonomy in the sense where I really kind of get to choose like what is best for the patient um, and kind of go from there. And I, mm-hmm. I, I really think that's a huge part of it too. Yeah. Um, so I guess my last question kind of just about the overall structure is, so what does it typically cost a patient um, or client per session? Yeah. So in the corporate setting, there's no cost at all. Like this is completely covered by their company. This is a perk. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is just a perk of their job. Um, obviously, I mean, they have their health insurance and stuff that they could use elsewhere. But mm-hmm. um, for most of the services that are offered, well, for, for sure, for PT, there's there's uh, there's no cost to the employee. So it's essentially mm-hmm. covered by the, cor- the, the corporate company itself. Um, and it's really just, you know, it's advertised as like a perk when you're kind of interviewing with them and stuff like that. Um, and it's funny, like, you know, we have like the company I'm at, takes interns in the summer and stuff like that. And, you know, mm-hmm. they're welcome to use the, the services too. And they come down and they're like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> like, I, I can't even believe this exists. And like, that's the response you get from a lot of these employees because it's a pretty, it's a pretty crazy situation that uh, I think a lot of companies could benefit from, but don't realize they can benefit from it. So I guess, why, why do you think we're not seeing more of it right now then? Do you think it's poor marketing on our behalf or? That's a really, you know, that's a very good point. I, I really kind of think this is going to be a little bit more common in the future because the way things are going as far as like, I mean, obviously we all know like insurance sucks kind of as far as like reimbursement goes at least. Um, so, you know, you're seeing, I mean, especially in New York, I don't know what the deal, I know you're in Boston. I'm, I'm not sure what the deal is there, but mm-hmm. it is like, you know, out of network and cash-based clinics are extremely popular in New York, like very, very common. Um, and, you know, I'll say is like, even the general public, from what I can tell, they're starting to notice the difference, like a, a, the vast difference of treatment, where as you know, if you're see, being seen one-on-one for like 45 minutes to an hour, just you and your PT mm-hmm. versus, um, you know, seeing your PT and like, again, I, I, I hate like, you know, I'm not naming any companies or anything like that, but like the whole mill vibe, but yeah. you know, you see a PT for like 10, 15 minutes and then you do your exercises and everything while your therex is kind of done by like an aide or a student. Um, and, you know, at least in New York, I can tell the general public is kind of differentiating between the quality and they're like, wow, like this is so much different than what I'm used to. And, you know, what happens is they're willing to pay the cost uh, because I mean, also New York, a lot of people have money too. Um, but in general, people, people, yeah, it definitely does help, but people are valuing that kind of quality and are willing to pay for it. And I think that translates very well into this corporate setting in a sense where if you can demonstrate to a company, I'm going to, I'm going to get your employees to be more functional, you know, in better health, all these different things. And I'm going to do it all while they, they don't even have to leave the office to get all this done. Right. If you kind of sell companies on that, you know, we don't, you know, in the PT world, like we don't, I mean, sometimes I feel like I forget how much money some of these companies have. Like Mm -hmm. if it's something that they're, that their employees are going to benefit from and, you know, in any way they're willing to spend the money on it. So I really do think that, I mean, first of all, I will say, like I said, it is already kind of a thing in certain companies. Like, for example, I know like 
my brother previously worked at Google and like they have certain situations like that and stuff like that. But, I, you know, major companies, it's pretty public knowledge have this, but, but I don't know the, the like extensiveness of it. Like, I'm not sure if they offer to the extent of like what you would get at a normal outpatient clinic. Mm -hmm. So I do think though, that the success of this is pretty evident, uh, at least from our view. So I really do think that it's a make, become more and more popular, but with the caveat, what I will say is like, I think it'll predominantly be in major cities where there are these huge corporations that have the money that are willing to spend to benefit their employees. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I, I really do think it's, it's a win-win for a, for a lot of different reasons. I'll be honest from what I can see. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you've talked a lot about the positives of yeah. <laughs> the corporate setting. So maybe if you can just touch on a few a few of the biggest challenges that you feel like you're facing. Absolutely. And one of the biggest ones that, you know, I was never used to and never thought is it'd be something I'd have to deal with is like just the general bureaucracy of these corporations. Like, you know, in a clinic, it's like you could talk directly to your boss, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, you can it can be a quick conversation or a decision that needs to be made about something. Right. But in these situations where there's like, you know, it's like you're contracted by this company do this X, Y, and Z, there's all these different moving parts to get an answer on something takes a while. Mm -hmm. So it's not like just said and done. Like you email one person, you get an answer and that's it. Um, so, you know, that has been a little bit of an adjustment I feel like for us in the sense of like kind of getting used to this, this kind of corporate environment of like having, to basically go through these different levels of communicating with people waiting for what could be like weeks for answers on certain things. Um, and then also you have to keep in mind, I think, I don't remember if we were recording at this point, but we were talking earlier, I touched upon the fact where, you know, in these situations, like these companies don't necessarily know like about PT or healthcare, mm -hmm. you know, some of these people that you're talking with, not that they don't know anything about healthcare, but to, to no fault of their own, you know, they're not in the healthcare industry, right? So they're not clinicians. So there's a big learning curve for them too, in the sense of like understanding it is exactly what we do, what we need to do what we do. Um, and, you know, in that regard, it's like, so there's a learning curve on, on both parts, I think, which is kind of difficult. So on their part, it's like, they don't really know what we do. And then on our part, it's like, we're used to getting answers about like certain things in the clinic very quickly. Because realistically, you know, there are huge, there are some, a couple of companies that are like very big. So in certain situations, there are these levels of kind of, uh, you know, executives and stuff like that. But for the most part, a lot of companies aren't that big. You can go talk to your boss pretty quickly and get an answer on something that day. Mm -hmm. That is like pretty difficult to do um, in this setting. You're going to have to probably wait a little bit to get an answer on something specific. And then there's that. And then there's also, I mean, and this isn't really, I wouldn't say a negative, but again, like it's not something you ever would consider because like obviously in a hospital, right? If you're a PT in a hospital, there's a lot of interdisciplinary, uh, you know, teamwork, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in this situation that exists in like the outpatient setting, right? Because like, like I mentioned, there's a nurse practitioner there, registered nurse, uh, psych uh, psychologist. So there are certain situations, you know, where like, you know, I'm being referred to patient by the NP, vice versa. You know, I'm noticing something in a patient that had no idea something might be wrong, let's say that's out of the realm of PT, where I'm saying, hey, like, you know, maybe you should go talk to the NP. Um, there's also the, I, you know, this is like in these companies, very high stress environments. And I'm sure, you know, you know, from your affiliations, like sometimes like these patients will treat like a treatment session, almost like therapy sometimes. So yeah. there are also situations where, you know, I'm like referring to the psychologist too. I'm like, Hey, like, you know, maybe you can benefit from talking to so-and-so down the hall. So those are things that I didn't <laughs> coming out of school. I was like never anticipating being a part of. Um, so I don't necessarily want to call them negatives, but those are the things that I feel like uh, were, and still maybe a little bit have been like a little bit of a learning curve for me. Yeah, um, absolutely. I but mean, again, just, I'm not, yeah, but I, I don't know if I'd like to label it with the word negative, but like, like you said, it's not, that's not something that's like, again, like bread and butter to me. Like obviously in my acute care fills, I was used to interacting with different disciplines and all that, but it's a little bit different when you're in the outpatient setting. Yeah. I, it seems like it's just a unique landscape and with Very. that, with that kind of comes with the territory, just learning things as you go. Um, little 
the last thing I kind of want to touch on, um, as you mentioned, there's a, obviously a big emphasis on ergonomics. Um, so what are you seeing as a whole in terms of issues for the desk workers um, or clients that you're treating? And then maybe what are some common corrections that you're making? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will say, like, honestly, a lot of them, which is awesome, are very open to the advice I give and are very good at listening to the advice I give them, which is kind of, it's really nice. It's like really underrated when people listen to you. <laughs> um, but so a lot of what you see is like, you know, the common, like someone sitting at their desk, staring at their computer for like four hours straight. Um, and, you know, I'll say like, so my philosophy on posture, there's all these different things of like, you know, do these exercises to correct your posture. You know, like you have to sit like in this very specific posture to like avoid any problems. I don't really sign on to that at all, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, Sure, maybe there is like an ideal posture that is like good to, to be in from at some point when you're sitting. But I honestly, the way I think is any position, if you are in that position for a long period of time, it's going to come with a slew of problems, right? So if you're hunched over for the entire day, that's going to lead to some issues. Also, though, if you're, you know, if you're in this like cocked back shoulder position all day, that's not going to feel great either. That's just not realistic to be in that position all day. And I think that'll lead to different issues, right? So, I mean, my like golden rule is move as much as possible throughout, you, throughout the day, right? So, I mean, like when you're in the office, this is actually one very interesting trend I've realized now with the whole work from home thing. Um, people, when they work from home, um, let's say for like weeks at a time, tend to kind of notice that they develop these different issues more so than when they're coming into the office regularly. And to me, that makes perfect sense with, in regards to what I just said, because when you're in your office, right, your desk is one place, um, you know, and again, think about like, we're thinking like, you know, huge kind of corporation company kind of building your cafeteria where you're going to get lunch. It's on a different floor. So you got to, you know, walk, either walk down the stairs or walk to the elevator, take the elevator down the gym, completely different, completely different floor, um, meeting rooms, completely different floor, all these different things. Right. And there's also just like, you know, there's these, there's reasons to get up and walk around. You're in public, you know, you have friends in the office, you're going to go talk to people, blah, blah, blah. You're moving so much more throughout the day when you're actually in the office compared to like at home, you know, especially in New York city nowadays with rent. I mean, like, you know, if you want to have an affordable rent, you're pretty much getting a very confined space, right? There's not much room to move around. And there's also, you know, not much of a reason to get up, right? Like kind of have everything you need right there. You kind of, you know, you grab your water bottle, whatever, bring it to your table. You kind of just work the rest of the day, hanging out at wherever you work, your workstation. So you're moving a lot less and you're kind of falling into this position of just like stagnant, like being stagnant and just like, you know, slouching, looking at your laptop all day. And again, like I always say, like, you know, there's nothing wrong with slouching for like 30 minutes, but when you do it for five hours, that's, that's not going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. And then the other thing, in that regard is also uh, like the standing desk option, right? So uh, a lot of companies were good and like also offered to like give stipends so that you could buy them for yourself at home. But all of the desks in the office, for example, have the standing desk option, right? So um, another huge tip of advice that I always give people is set a reminder on your phone, whether it's like every hour or every other hour, right? Let's say on the half hour. And then you just say, okay, the reminder basically says stand up, you put the standing desk position in, and then you do, you know, 15 minutes of work in that standing position. And then you can go back down to sitting. Like it's something as simple as that, just like a recurring outlook reminder or an iPhone reminder to just remind you to get up and move. Um, I also always encourage my patients to do their HEPs when feasible uh, throughout the day at work. So, I mean, I always say like, look, like leave a TheraBand upstairs in your office do the different things we went over as a break th throughout the day. It gives you a reason to stand up and do something, mm -hmm. especially the ones that are private offices. I'm like, you have no reason not to. I'm like, no one's going to look at you and make fun of you for doing this because no one can see you. Mm -hmm. um, so in those situations, as far as like, you know, posture and ergonomics go, those are the kind of two big themes that I go over with patients. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I don't sign on to the whole, like you need to be in a specific posture as much as you can throughout the day. I'm big on the, I think, I feel like I first heard it. I remember like a couple, maybe like a year or two ago, like 
I don't know if you follow like the prehab guys account. Mm-hmm. They started talking about that. I was like, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And there, I looked into like different research and stuff like that. And there's not really, you know, so much, there's not too much evidence to show that one specific posture is better than another. And there's not really a lot of evidence to say that slouching for some amount of time is going to cause all these issues. Yeah. Something I've always heard or something that I really liked was, um, the best box the best posture is your next posture yeah (laughs) no exactly exactly i'm always just saying like i don't care what you look like you could look like you know tied up in a pretzel as long as you're only there for like five minutes and then you move into a different position i'm okay with it i always tell my patients i'm like i don't know if you can tell now like i don't have the best posture like i'm slouching a little bit but the thing is the nature of our job is we're not sitting really I, i don't know about you but i don't really sit and look at the computer for more than a half hour. This has probably been the longest I've sat and looked at a computer uh, mm-hmm. for a while. You know, we just move around. We do a lot of different things throughout the day. So me having bad posture isn't as detrimental as someone who doesn't do anything but stare at the computer all day having bad posture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like it's almost a sigh of relief you get from your patients when you tell them that because they Absolutely. think that they need to be in a certain position when in reality Absolutely. it's not the case. And like, you know, you get, and it's, I don't know, it's like predatory marketing. Like you get all these different weird products that are like, mm-hmm. like oh, like, you know, well, your shoulders will be like kept backwards. Like I've seen like crazy stuff that people buy, like yeah. they'll like vibrate on your like thoracic spine to like clench your shoulder. It's very crazy. Um, and I always try and do my best to explain like, look, like you don't need these things. Like just try your best to move around as much as you can throughout the day. And like I say, it's always, I always tell them like, it's something as simple as like an outlook reminder. Like there's really, there's really no excuse not to do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so I guess what advice do you have for someone who's interested in getting involved in the corporate setting? Yeah. So that's where it gets tricky. Cause like I said, I got extremely lucky in my situation, mm-hmm. but I think, uh, I mean, like, so it's tough because realistically I got put into a good situation where my company is kind of involved in this. Right. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to, you know, getting, let's say trying to make your own way in it, I think looking to like what my boss did is an amazing example. Right. Cause it's like, he has been treating in the city for years now. Um, he's built a network of patients that trust him, that love him, that go to him for anything that's wrong with them. Right. Um, and realistically, after a while, again, you make tons of connections. And realistically, in the city, a lot of these patients are going to work at these big companies, right? So um, when an opportunity arises, it's really just about jumping on it. So Mm -hmm. um, the next time, you know, you have a friend that's at this huge company or a patient that's at this huge company, that's considering, uh, uh, you know, implementing something like this, you know, you better jump on that right away and kind of say like, hey, you know, you know, me, you've been a patient of mine for a while, this is why you should let my company or just me personally provide services in house for you guys. Um, so I really think when it comes down to it, it's not something that you're going to build on your own overnight. I'll say that. Like, so like I said, like I told you, like I never in a million years was in PT school thinking I'm going to, you know, I'm going to graduate and I'm going to be treating in like a corporate environment. I'm going to be providing in-house services. It's just something you can't do. I don't think like you can't plan for that. Right. You might end up working somehow but um yeah realistically i really think though it comes down to providing like spectacular care in your community mm-hmm. and then basically building trust and then when the opportunity arises you have to go for it you have to actually you know, i mean you have to go out of your way to go for it it's not something that's going to fall into your lap sure so what so then with your um indeed uh, indeed yeah, job yeah. opportunity like, <laughs> what did that what did that say when it came up or like if someone's looking specifically for a corporate um, yeah. wellness gig like what how's so that going to present in an that's ad? a good that's a good question in my case it was pretty explicitly stated it was like mm-hmm. you're going you know part of this position is providing you know in-house services blah blah, blah for this company um but that's a really good question and i think what you should look for in those regards are kind of like if you want to try and get involved in a company that might go down that route at some point, or maybe isn't advertising it as blatantly, maybe okay. as my company was, it's maybe, you know, look for like the things you said, like those corporate wellness programs, like they develop those kind of things as a company. Mm-hmm. They provide maybe like educational lectures and stuff for these large companies, um, you know, stuff like that, or even just like outreach, like we were talking about earlier, I, or like privately is like about like gyms and stuff like that. It doesn't need to be a huge company. Like you don't need to start, yeah with a gigantic company, 
but you do kind of need to start somewhere in regards to like doing these outreach programs of like, let's not limit ourselves to treating just in our clinics. Let's try and find a way to provide our services elsewhere uh, in addition to our clinics because okay. you know it's a good good way to go about it so i guess if you're looking for a job i think the best best thing to look for in those regards if this is something that interests interests you is is that company doing these types of things are they making an effort to outreach to different kind of you know companies gyms whatever it is to provide services elsewhere other than their specific clinic um there's that there's also like i said like are they even if it's something as basic as like providing educational lectures or something like that for these companies mm -hmm. um Basically, you want a boss that is a businessman is one thing is, you know, they're not just like, I'm going to you know run a PT clinic and that's going to be it. Mm -hmm. um, you want an entrepreneur as a boss. So that's another important thing to look for. Um, but yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's I, I don't think it's easy to like seek out. I'll be honest. It's something that you need to really kind of read between the lines for. Never. And then so I've got five questions I ask all my guests. Are you up for it? Gotcha. Yeah, sure. All right. First question I got for you is what is your biggest key to a successful day? Uh, that's a good one. You know what? I'm trying to think. You know what I've been I I think I'm like probably one of the only people that still do it. So I do the wordle still every day. <laughs> and I do the quirtle too. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but I have, yep. Yeah, I'm I'm the king of quirtle. But uh so going off of that, I think it's really important. So I always, always do that mm -hmm. on my commute. Like I always do it on the subway. I like make an effort of it. And I do it also in part, it's fun is one thing. I like showing off to my friends, but uh, in part also, I think it's really important to do something with your brain before you get to work. So I look, you know, I look around sometimes people are like asleep on the subway and stuff like that, which is mind blowing to me. But in my mind, I'm like, you need to kind of warm up your brain just as much as you'd warm up your muscles and your body at the gym, so to speak. Um, so I think it's super important to do some type of mental task in between the time of you waking up and getting to work. And, you know, I mean, if we're talking PT specific, like before you see that first patient or that first eval, your brain has to be on. Like <laughs> You can't just go into it cold. Yeah, and I was I was always told when you're t uh, in college, like if you have a morning test, you should do some reading ahead of time. Get yeah. the eye, get the eyes moving, warm everything Absolutely. up. Absolutely. I'm like I also work out before work, but uh -huh. sometimes I think it's like too metabolic. Like if you know if it's just working out and you're just in a routine, it's like you're not really critically thinking or anything like that. Yeah. So sometimes in my head, I'm like that's not enough. Like you got kind of have to do like an actual mental task of sorts. Uh huh. All right. Next question is, what do you wish someone would have told you five years ago today that would impact or change the way that you practice today? Okay. Yeah. So five, yeah, five years ago today, I was probably 40 pounds heavier than I am now. I was like in pretty bad shape to be honest. Yeah. And now I'm like a huge proponent and people have very mixed opinions on this of like, it's important kind of as a PT to a practice what you preach um and b like we just have a physical job so it's like really kind of important in my opinion to work out like even if you're in a q kit like doing a max assist lift like you need to be preparing for that like that's not something you should just be doing without doing any type of work you know yeah, outside absolutely. of it you know i mean like it's that's a very strenuous activity it's something you should in my opinion train for um so yeah if you if you had me five years ago when i was like 40 pounds heavier eating like shit and not working out at all i would hope that you would tell me you know start getting your act together start lifting again because i was big on lifting in high school and stuff like that once i got to college kind of went out the window and stayed stayed that way for a while um but uh yeah i would definitely have loved for someone to more so encourage me to work out five years ago so uh, we asked what has been your key to success and just continuing that workout routine uh making it something that i actually won't like hate to be honest so i would like i mean not that i was ever like crazy in the gym but i would spend a lot of time in the gym when i was younger and then i feel like it got to the point where i was like in college and i was like i can't do this like i was like i have all these different hard classes i'm taking like all these you know intro to chemistry <laughs> intro to bi biology which like at the time are really hard classes honestly um so i'm like struggling with that I was like rushing a fraternity in college and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't have time for the gym. You know, like I was like my workout, like this hour and a half, two hour workout, I can't squeeze it into the day. Right. But like, it never occurred to me to just like go for like 30 minutes or 45 minutes. Right. 
So I now like a big mantra of mine is like, you know, like I go to the gym in the morning, right? If something happens where I get to the gym late, like I don't, I'm like, whatever, the workout's going to be shorter today, right? Like I leave the gym at a certain time, no matter what. So, you know, if I get there late, if I like slept in for like 15 minutes, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to beat myself up about it. So it's more just about making it something that you're going to actually do every day. And I know that's like cliche that everyone says that, but more about like, you know, not getting in your head about like having a bad workout or something like that, because realistically, you know, even if I go and I do like just three sets on like the bench or something like that, like that's a win at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question I have for you is what book or product has positively impacted your life for the last three months? Uh, I literally, I don't think I, so it's definitely going to be a book. I don't think I've read a book since like 10th grade, <laughs> to be honest, which is crazy, but at least like on paper. Uh, so I'm going to go with product. Uh, if we're going to, if we're going to be specific to the last three months, I'm going to go with the computer mouse. Um, I feel like a computer mouse is something that kind of like became outdated for a little bit, which was a little weird. I, I mean, like maybe just because with laptops and stuff like that, the idea of like portability was big um but when it comes to writing notes man like having a mouse is huge especially if you're doing these autofill type of things Mm -hmm. um and that's just something i didn't really think of even getting until like the last kind of three months to have like a mouse to use when writing notes and stuff like that so from an ergonomic standpoint definitely (laughs) uh next question i have for you is what is a quote or mantra that you live your life by okay um to this one i'm gonna go with uh i forget i have it written out here actually because this one i prepared for uh all right so albert hubbard said don't take life too seriously or or you'll or you'll never get out of it alive which i think is really important and i see you know i saw it a lot in pt school like a lot of my friends and just my cohort like really stressed themselves out Mm -hmm. you can ask anyone that knows me like I'm just so I'm not like that at all. Like I never, I never let like school get me worked up and stuff like that. I made it like I, I always, always had a rule is like Saturday. I am not doing anything school related. I'm going out with my friends. Like that was just my rule. I was like, no matter what, I don't care if I have an exam on Monday. It doesn't matter. Saturday is my day to do whatever I want. Um, and yeah, I mean, like even now, like I don't like I think I said before, like if I don't know something, like, I don't freak out. Like, I'm just like, look, like, this isn't that serious. Like, I'm not, I know I'm not going to injure the patient. I know I'm not going to do anything detrimental. So I'm not going to psych myself out and make this eval worse because I don't know something. Um, so to kind of tie that into PT specifically, that's the way. But just in general, I mean, like, being a, being a little carefree is really important. Just, like, keeping your stress under control. Mm-hmm. Um, because at the end of the day, none of this is, you know, life or death. <laughs> yeah. It's a good approach. I like it. Yeah. Um, last question I have for you. Same your question the podcast. Andre Benzar, what is your favorite snack? <laughs> yeah. So I was thinking about this one too. I was, um, if I have to go like during the day, right? Uh-huh. Like something that I'm realistically going to eat throughout my work day, I'm definitely going to go with protein bars just because it seems like, I don't know, some of them aren't even that healthy, but in my mind, I'm like, oh, you know, that's a healthy snack, whatever. But if it's like, you know, Sunday night scaries type of situation, I think I'm going Swedish fish 10 times. Ooh, yeah. Okay. I like it. Rush. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, where can people find you if they want to follow along your journey? Yeah. Um, so I'm like slowly building my following right now on Instagram. But uh, so at DPT Dre on Instagram. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn also. Um, but yeah, not too big of a presence on social media right now, but I'm slowly trying to build that. So any follows would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what's next for you after, you know, what are kind of your next steps that you're looking at into the future here? Like career wise? Yeah. Or any uh, I'm, coming up? I'm where I am for the long haul right now. That's my mindset. I'm like I said, uh, I think I'm under the wing of kind of a little bit of a genius in the PT world. Uh-huh. Um, and I don't plan on leaving his side until I mean at all right now I have no reason to so I'm pretty I'm pretty happy where I am I gotta be honest awesome thanks again so much for coming on really appreciate it and learned a lot about corporate PT absolutely John no problem I enjoyed talking shop